Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Maintaining an optimal temperature range is absolutely essential to your BOA's well-being. Regardless of what type of device you use to heat your BOA's enclosure, you will need to use a thermostat in order to maintain this optimal temperature range. There are several different types of thermostats available that I've had experience with. So today I wanna to walk you through the different thermostats I've used and give some of the pros and cons of each. I'm also gonna demonstrate how to set up a thermostat to maintain the temperature range in your BOA's enclosure. Regardless of what type of heating device you're using to heat your BOA, whether it's some kind of a heat tape or a ceramic heat emitting panel or some kind of a bulb, it's very important that you don't just plug it in unregulated and use it to heat your BOA because the vast majority of these devices will get far too hot if you don't use some kind of a thermostat to control the temperature. And the heat will be so high that you'll probably end up killing your BOA. In addition, if you plug one of these devices in unregulated, it poses an extreme fire hazard and you could end up burning your house down. So obviously you don't wanna do this. So make sure that you invest in a quality thermostat. The way that the thermostats work is they have these heat probes and the heat probe makes contact with the heat source and it uh, basically measures the temperature and then it communicates via a wire back to the main thermostat and you have your heating device plugged into the main thermostat. And so the thermostat regulates the amount of power that comes into the heating device in order to maintain the desired temperature range. The first type of thermostat that I used were these jump start heat mat controllers, which are made by a company called Hydroform. There's actually quite a few companies that make similar heat mat controllers that are used for controlling the heat mats used in starting seeds. But it's a relatively simple and inexpensive device. The way it works is it has this temperature probe and it's got on the thermostat main unit where you set the temperature, it's got this plug. You plug in your heat source and I'm going to be using this uh, ultra therm heat uh, tape. So you plug that in like that. And then you want to attach the heat probe to the heat source. And to do this, I just use this paper masking tape. And this is just for demonstration purposes. If you do this yourself, you want to find the optimal part of the heating device to tape it to. Okay. So I've got the heat probe attached to the heat tape. I've got the heat tape plugged into the thermostat and then I just have to plug this into the wall and set the temperature on this and this will maintain the temperature within a few degrees of the temperature that I input onto the thermostat. When you're placing the probe of this or any other thermostat you always want it to be outside of the enclosure. You don't want it in the enclosure with the BOA for a number of different reasons and because of this you need to set the temperature of the probe, but then you have to carefully check the temperature in your BOA's closure. And typically you want the hot spot to be about 90 degrees or so. And so you need to set the thermostat to make sure that that hot spot is about 90 degrees. And because there's typically a plastic tub plus maybe some space and plus the substrate, you're gonna to have to set the temperature on the thermostat quite a bit higher than the actual temperature you want. And in practice, typically the temperature will be set about five, sometimes even as much as 10 degrees higher on the thermostat than the desired temperature. So these jumpstart um, heat mat controllers, they're okay to start off with, but they have a number of pretty serious drawbacks. So the first is that you can't put too much wattage in here. And on the back it says that the maximum wattage is a thousand watts. I can tell you that these can't even handle anywhere near that. So I would not recommend plugging more than one 
piece of heat tape into this. I won't do any kind of um, series circuit where you have multiple heat tapes on this because it's just too much for it to handle. That um, ultra therm heat tape I showed you, that particular one is about 40 watts and that would be okay to plug into this, but I wouldn't plug anything that's you know very high wattage into this. The way these work is it's a simple on-off thermostat and it's got an electromagnet. When it gets above a certain temperature, it shuts off. When it gets below a certain temperature, it shuts back on. And because of this, you don't get a really precise temperature uh, maintenance. It's just within a, a range of a few degrees. The other huge drawback with these things is that they can fail without any notice and they often will fail on the on position because it depends on if the circuit was switched on or off when the thing fails. And I've actually had these fail in the on position before and it can have disastrous consequences. So once I had um, some tubs on a rack that was plugged into one of these devices and it happened to fail in the on position and I only had the device for about a year and even though the hot spot is on one side of the tub the tub does heat up quite a bit on the other side because it kind of traps heat and I measured that the temperature on the cool side had already gotten above 90 degrees and luckily I was there I was able to disconnect this and you know since then I haven't used these other than for a single uh, heat mat and I only use them you know in, in certain circumstances. These heat mat controllers often don't last very long I've had some of them that die within about a year of purchase Others will last about five years or so, but again, they can fail without warning. Um, they're okay if for a, someone who's starting off that wants a cheap thermostat in like, you know, $25 to $30 range. But just be very careful with it when you're using one and check on it a lot just to make sure that it's still functioning properly. Currently, for the vast majority of my enclosures, I use a Herbstat thermostat. And the Herbstat thermostats are very powerful and sophisticated thermostats that can do a number of different essential functions for your reptiles enclosure. So first off, these are a proportional device. So rather than simply turning on and off the power like that cheap uh, uh, jumpstart controller I just showed you, these devices regulate the amount of current that gets to the heating device. And they keep the temperature of the heating device within a much more precise range. So if the uh, thermostat has to put out 40% of the normal power, it will do that to keep the heating device exactly at 92 degrees or whatever you set the temperature. The Herbstats come in multiple configurations and they come from anywhere from a single channel that has one temperature probe up to the Herbstat 6, which is my uh, model of choice. These have six channels and six probes, and they can control the temperature on six def separate temperature um, devices or, or heating devices. The Herbstat are also very powerful for some of the other functions. In addition to controlling the heat, they can control the humidity as well as the lighting in your enclosure. You can set alarms on these devices, so if they go outside of your preferred range, the alarm will go off. Uh, in addition, you can do nighttime drops, and this is essential for boa breeding. I can set it to drop a few degrees at night, and then I can, um, every week I can set an additional few degrees, and I can have this um, temperature drop that kicks in over the course of several weeks. So very handy and necessary for the boa breeder. And very importantly, unlike that jumpstart device, the herbstats will not fail in the on position, and therefore there are much less of a risk for uh, harming your boas or to cause a fire hazard. So now I want to give you a brief tour of the operation and setup of the Herbstat 6. Here's a Herbstat 6 that I'm using to control temperature on the heat tape that I have on a rack. And first I'll just show you the back of it where the probes and the temperature or the heating devices plug in. So you can see that there's six channels there and on the top are the plugs where the heating devices plug in and you can see right below are the plugs for the thermostat probes. 
you can see I'll just unplug one of these thermostat probes here. You can see it's beeping because it's detected that it's unplugged. But this is what the probe end looks like. So I'm just going to plug that back in here. So you can see one challenge with having all these wires is that the organization can get quite complicated. So if you see here, I have these heat or these tape labels and I've labeled what channel each one goes into on these probes. Actually, I didn't do that for these plugs that plug into the heat tape, but I would recommend that you do that as well, just to avoid confusion. And then clearly label every shelf or every sh uh, shelf on the rack where you have the device that corresponds to that particular channel. So now we'll look at the interface of the Herbstat. And it's a relatively simple interface, although it can be a little bit clunky to use. Uh, but the instructions are pretty clear. Now I'm going to run through how to set the temperature controls on the Harpstat 6. So we want to select the channel that we want to use. So you go enter and then you go plus or minus. So we're going to output one, enter. And so the mode is the dimming mode, which is the proportional mode. That's the correct mode. You can also set um, the humidity or the lighting mode in that same way. We go to the daytime temperature and see it's set to 91 degrees, but you can set it up or down in fractions of a tenth of a degree. And I, it's set to 91 because I've measured the temperature on the in the tub that the BOA is contained in, and I know that that gives me a temperature of about 90 degrees at my hot spot. So one nice feature is the night cycle. So we can cool the temperature at night. We hit enter, night cycle on. So you can turn it on or off, so it's now enabled. Okay, so then we go to the night temperature. And let's say we want to drop the temperature to 80 degrees at night. So it's set to 85, but we cool down to 80 like this. And you hit enter and then we can set the time that it's going to start and end so set to 8 p.m say we want to set it to 6 p.m you can just count up like this or actually i went past it unfortunately you have to go through it again if you go past it the so 6 6 p.m enter and then the end time set to 10.30. Let's say we want to end it at 6 a.m. Okay, 6 a.m. enter. So now it's going to turn the temperature down starting at 6 p.m. and turn it back up starting at 6 a.m. And you can even use ramping, which actually I don't use that, but um, you can make it go up or down um, faster or slower so you can ramp over the course of a half hour or an hour I think the default yeah I think it's set to half an hour is the default and I just use that for the ramping but if you want it to ramp up faster or slower you can control that as well so very very handy so actually I'm just going to turn it back off because I don't want it on now but this is really an essential feature for the boa breeding season when you're cycling your boas. Just a brief comment on the probes that go with the Herbstat units. So this is the current design and they have these metal tip probes and these have worked really well with me without any issues. They used to make probes that were plastic tipped. It's a larger plastic, black plastic tip that's about two inches. And I have sometimes will have issues with these probes, the plastic probes, that deliver this invalid measurement and then it makes this really annoying beeping and basically I have to move the placement of the probe around because the probe is really finicky and it's really sensitive to exactly how it's placed and I don't completely understand how 
or why it's doing this. I just know that the newer design with the metal tip probes has worked for me a lot better. So I would highly recommend getting the metal tip probes, which they use on all of the newer herb stats. Um, when you're positioning the probe, you may have to kind of move it around um, and tape it in different places. Sometimes I think if you have a tub on top of the probe and it's putting pressure on the probe, it can cause it to have an invalid reading, which leads to that error. In addition, always use just the paper tape. Do not use fo aluminum foil tape because the aluminum foil tape can actually interfere with the electrical signal and it can make the probe malfunction. And then importantly, when you're setting the temperature of the herpstat, you want to set the temperature based on the actual temperature in the tub. So you're going to have your probe below the tub attached right to the heat tape and then you likely will have to set it several degrees higher than the temperature that you want to maintain in your tub. So you set the temperature and then you carefully read inside of the tub what the temperature is reading. And if it's a couple degrees too cold, just bump up the temperature on the thermostat. Um, I'm constantly checking the temperature in my tubs with this laser gun thermometer. And it can vary throughout the year. Sometimes it gets a little cooler or hotter. So I'm always tweaking it a degree or two in each direction just to maintain that hot spot of about 90 degrees in the tub. A final consideration is how many heating devices you want to plug in to each channel of your thermostat. It's possible to plug in multiple devices into a channel and the way to do this is to get one of these extension cords that has the three plug splitter and you plug in three separate heat tapes into this and then you plug the one plug of the extension cord into the thermostat. The downside with this is you only have one temperature probe. So you would just use the one probe to measure the temperature on one of the heat tapes and that by default would control the electrical output to the other two and keep it in the desired temperature range. And I've used this system to control heat tapes on three separate shelves of a rack and it works pretty good and it's, I'm able to get it to within a few degrees. You know, sometimes there's a variability of a couple degrees in either way, but given my setup, it works acceptably well. If you want to control a precise temperature, I would recommend just using one thermostat probe for each heating device and not to split them in this way. To end the video, I thought I'd share with you this beautiful North Brazilian true red tail boa. And this is an animal is about five years old. She's been slow grown, so she's maybe not quite five feet long. Um, she possibly might be ready to breed next year or maybe the year after. But North Brazilian boas are really beautiful and um, they, they're characterized by this kind of grayish tannish background color that's different from both the Suriname slash Guiana and Boas and the Peruvian red tails. And then they have this insane amount of background markings. So a real wild looking pattern with all these splotches and freckles and intersaddle markings. They also have these really cool peak saddles that are somewhat jagged in shape. Just a really wild looking boa. Um, the heads typically have beautiful eyelash markings like this female and a lot of these cool markings on the head. And then they have a very nice long red tail in some of the cases like this particular animal. Other North Brazilians have kind of a shorter uh, tail that's not quite as red as the Suriname and Peruvian boas. Just a really cool locality boa. I'll have to do, I don't think I've done a video yet on the North Brazilians, but I have to share these, the rest of my North Brazilian animals with you guys in a future video. But I just thought I'd grab this girl out since she just shed and she's looking really beautiful. So I hope this video was helpful and gave you some ideas about controlling your temperatures in your boas enclosure. As always, feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.